Well, I guess you know our number 15 team, the Florida State Seminoles. We just did Clemson as the number 14 team. So you clearly see who the top two teams in are the ACC. Miami's going to have something to say about that. But let's break down the Florida State Seminoles. And in Better's Edge at the end of this tape, I have a 78% over-under situation that may occur up to six times this season. Make sure you stay tuned. We're doing this video July 17th, so let's take a look at their odds at this time. National Championship, 22 to 1. Conference Championship, plus 290. To make the playoffs, yes, plus 140. No, minus 180. Season win total sits at 9.5. The over, minus a buck 10. The under, minus a buck 10 as well. To go undefeated, yes is plus 550, no minus 900. And their quarterback, DJU, is making his way around from Clemson to Oregon State, now to Florida State, 40 to 1 to win the Heisman. Folks, Gold Sheet's the finest newsletter in the country. We're doing their top 25. These are based on their power ratings. Their summer guide is out and available. If you want power ratings, strength of schedule, it's the only place to go get it. Goldsheet.com and wagertalk.com. We've already released all access information to our current customers, and you can save $30 off the weekly Gold Sheet newsletter. Go to wagertalk or Gold Sheet and use code GS30. Florida State last year, again, they were the talk of the beginning of December. Should they be in? Should they not be in because of the quarterback injury? Well, they finished 13 and 1. 8-6 and six against the spread, 8-6 and six over under. They were number 23 as far as yards per play diff goes, plus 1.25. Their yards per game on offense and defense, number 54 yards per game offense, number 28 defense. But points per game, they were very productive, 18 on offense, 18 on defense. They played the number 48 schedule. And the efficiency ranks were number 24 and number 12. Now, again, let's remember, Jordan Travis got hurt in the North Alabama game. He didn't play the last three games, and the offense truly struggled down the stretch. The reason they didn't get in, they had 224 yards without him against Florida, 220 yards against Louisville in the ACC championship, and then they ended up having 209 yards against Georgia. They do have a strong special teams last year, and I expect them to again. They were number three in net punting and number seven in kick return offense. And they were 3-0 and in close games, which is a bit of a negative. They led BC 31-10 to late third quarter, but BC got a touchdown, a fumble return touchdown, a TD with five minutes left. And guess what? They ended up losing by two points. They missed two two-point conversions in the fourth quarter. Against Miami of Ohio, 10-10 at halftime. Florida State took a 27-13 lead. Miami scored, but then ran out of time to get that game. So again, when you have three close games, you win them all. That is a big of a negative. We'll see what happens for the 2024 season. Guys, I love all these comments, and we certainly appreciate them. Please do take a minute to comment below. Smash that like button. Gives us a thumbs up. Helps our numbers helps our algorithms, and again, any question you might want, any prediction you think I'm going to be wrong on, where do you think Florida State will finish? Please do share in the comments section below. Florida State is a team that is hurting in, in returning production this year. Four on offense, five on defense, a total of nine starters, and that's number 90 in Connolly. Looking at the rest of the chart, you'll see they do not return their quarterback, they do have their coaching staff, and recruiting, they're powerful. Number two in the SEC, folks, if you're going to be BAM in recruiting, in the, uh, excuse me, number two in the ACC, number 11 overall, that's a big step up for Florida State. They were normally a top 20 team, but for them to get to number 11 is pretty powerful. They have 17 transfers they went out to get this year. While it's not the most in the ACC, it is by far the most talented group. They are the number one transferred uh, rating group with the number of 4% players that they did bring in. The past three years, only nine starters back this year, 
the last three years, 16, 17, and 17 returning starters. We'll see how Norville does having many fewer returning starters as he had his first few years here at Florida State. Also, in 2022, they lost one player to the draft. In 2023, they lost one player in the draft. In 2024, they lost 10 players with 36 points, a significant drop-off. And if you're returning nine starters, that means you lose 12 starters. If 10 of those 12 starters you lost got drafted in the NFL, that just shows exactly how much talent is bereft from the 2024 unit. Those are very important keynotes to take in mind as you're looking at this Florida State team moving forward. They lost the ACC Player of the Year and NFL Draft Choice, Jordan Travis, at quarterback. And, again, they pick out DJ Ukulele with 2,600 yards and a 21-7 ratio at Oregon State last year. Again, he was at Clemson the two years prior. They do lose their number one running back but return number two and three. While that NFL, while that NFL uh, running back was a number three draft pick, this is still a very talented unit, and they have a lot of depth. The receivers, they lose their top three, and all three were NFL draft picks. Obviously, that is an area of concern. They lose two offensive line starters, but they are deep. They bring over 190 returning starters back, and are going to add a couple transfers to the mix. The D loses their top two tacklers and six of their top nine. The D line loses two draft choices, a number one and number two draft choice. The linebackers lose three players, including an NFL draft choice. And the DBs lose two starters, including an NFL draft choice. Linebackers, Losing three, I have them as the lowest unit, so we'll need, they'll need some good linebacker play to help this defense, which, again, was very strong last year. Remember, I'm going back to look at those ranks. I don't have them on the top of my head. But you look at, you look at those teams, and they were 18 in points per game and number 12 defensive efficiency. So that unit, I think, it, it can really recover despite the loss of their starters. Let's take a look at the schedule for Florida State. They have the number 35 toughest schedule. The, it, the games in gray are the games between the eights. You see they have four of them. SMU a six-point favorite. Clemson a three-point favorite. At Miami of Florida pick. At Notre Dame a six-point dog. Versus Duke, you see them off a bye. Both teams are off a bye. If you look at their worst spot on the schedule, it's clearly Notre Dame down on the 9th of November. Now, if you watch the Notre Dame video, I actually use Notre Dame against Florida State as my best bet. So I'm not going to use that here in the better's edge. But do keep that in mind that actually that was the number one spot. When they are on a bye against Memphis, Memphis will be coming off Troy. And then they have Florida State. And then they have Navy on deck. So, again, having a conference road game on deck for Memphis is a tough scheduling spot in that role. Again, Florida State, three buys this week as they start in Ireland against Georgia Tech. That, to me, if they get off to a good start, will truly help them having the buy September 7th, having a buy October 12th, and having a buy 11-16. So when you're playing those early games and you're playing week zero and, and you're playing in a different country, if you win them and it doesn't hurt you the next week, it truly becomes a positive at the end of the year. For the batter's edge, we're just taking some situations that are positive. We look at the coaches or negatives. Norville was at Memphis. Then he came here in the year 2022. At Florida State, he's two games over 500 against the spread. 25 and 23. At home, he's only 11 and 14 against the spread, but he is 15 and 10 over under. That's 16 percent to the 60 percent to the over. On the road, he's gone 11 and 7, 61 percent. But two and five is an away dog of four and a half or higher. 
And nine and two is an away favorite or a small dog. So when they go on the road and they're the better team or equally matched, Norvell has had great success at home, including Memphis. He is actually 69% to the over, folks. If you look at Norville's every game as a head coach at Memphis and Florida State, 35 overs, 16 unders, and a push, 69%. And if he's a home favorite of minus five and a half and more, he has gone 78% to the over. Keep an eye on that. Florida State going to be a home favorite in that range up to six games. And the best spot, as I said, for my better Z situation is Notre Dame. Before I get to the best bet for this show, make sure you stay tuned in to all the rest of the top 25 videos. If you missed any, check back at the archives as we've done number one through now, number 15. My best bet here for Better's Edge for Florida State. Against BC, I project them to be minus 13, and that's exactly where they are, minus 13, the total 54 and a half. This game, of course, in Ireland. When I looked at game number one, double-digit neutral favors since 2012, they have covered 71.4%, a positive situation. Do you think they had to want to lay doubles in a weird, unique setting at the beginning of the season? Again, since 2012, double-digit game one neutral favorites of minus 12 or higher have gone 71.4%. Now, Georgia Tech returns 13 starters, so they are not, uh, they, they do not have a young team. They're in the middle of the road. But when I look at this matchup, this is one of the best lines, if not the best O line in the ACC, against maybe the worst D line in the ACC. And Mike Norville has to remember when he came to Florida State in 2020, his first game for the Seminoles, he was a 12 and a half point home favorite against Georgia Tech. Lost that game outright. Add it all up. We're going to go with Florida State. Week zero against Boston College minus the 13 points. Check out all the videos below, including team number 16 next.